So here's a quick tutorial to show you how to create a Android keyboard. Um, it's pretty easy. Here we go. Um, the tutorial is designed to be for somebody who doesn't know much about programming. So the code that you get with this tutorial is uh, pretty basic and really easy to extend. So first thing is to download Android Studio. So, oh, by the way, this is going through a tutorial that I've already made on my website, sickschool.com. Let's scroll up. There we go, sickschool.com. Um, and some people like the videos, so you explain it further. So in the description of the YouTube video that I'm making right now, there'll be a link to this tutorial where you can get all the code, this code that you'll see. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? Uh, download Android Studio. I've already downloaded it. It's very boring. It takes a bit of time. It's about two gig of download. And when you open it up, it won't quite look like mine because I've already opened a few projects. Um, and just start by clicking on this. Start a new Android project. It should only take you a few minutes to do. Um, call your project something. I'll call mine Bob. Call it anything you feel like. Uh, my website is sixschool.com, so I'll put that down. And uh, whatever, doesn't matter. The rest doesn't really matter. Just keep to the defaults, whatever. Unless you learn, until you learn more about it, just stick to the defaults. Um, empty activity, I suppose. I, uh, you might learn that a keyboard doesn't actually need an activity. You might hear from somebody, but I think it's nice to have. It's like when your keyboard loads, it doesn't actually show. When you install it, it doesn't show anything. So what the good keyboard uh, people make uh, people who make good keyboards I should say they have a little activity it's like a, a window that pops up with a bunch of instructions on how to actually uh, set the de um, the keyboard you've made as the default keyboard anyway so whatever uh, click next doesn't matter what this is called click finish so I'll start by creating a um, project for you it's a bit slow and it's a bit dumb this software it like when you've even created it by default it's kind of can't even load um, it crashes itself or something but it's not a big deal right um, so right oh, okay so this is um, a project I've created before I believe no it's not no it's not it's a new project okay so <clears throat> you have this thing called main activity. Don't worry about it. Just totally ignore it. Doesn't do anything. Uh, all this stuff doesn't matter either. <clears throat> this saw, this crashed last time I loaded it, but anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so what do we need to do? First thing is we need to. Uh, it had this open before, didn't it? Uh, I think it's loading. Come on, load. Nothing to show in the structure video. Where is it? Where's the Project bit, come on project. Weird, silly thing. Oh, here we go. That's what we had before. Right, so we're gonna need to uh, create two uh, files. So click on that under Java, uh, under App on the side. Right click it. New Java class and call it exactly like it says in my tutorial otherwise things will be get a bit confusing uh call the first thing my keyboard just the beginning but you don't need to keep the don't write need to write dot java because we're creating a java class which automatically will add the dot java bit so my keyboard don't worry about anything else just say OK, and um, so in my tutorial, when I made it the first time, I call the project uh, Bubbles instead of Bob. Um, so don't copy the first line and don't replace your first line. So your first line will 
have something like that, whatever, you know, the, your company name and the project name, I called it Bob this time, so it has that, so don't replace that, but do replace the rest, and replace the rest with uh, this stuff, let's copy it, there we go, oh, too far down, come on, you can do it, you can do it, yep, alright, there we go, copy, and a paste all right that's one might as well press save what's next uh let's make an oh there we go just made that new file there uh right click again let's make another java class this time call it my view and i'm gonna copy paste so it's like really accurate, you know, you need the capital M, the capital V, everything about the spelling is important. So copy, paste that, say OK. Again, don't replace the top line, but do replace everything else with the code in my tutorial. So copy this. Here we go. All right. Copy. Go away and uh, paste and uh, control S save. What's next? All right, so I got this stuff. That's the Java code done. I also need to go here and double click on Android manifest because I'm going to change it a little bit. It's going to add some stuff on it uh, that says. Uh, what we're making is a keyboard right where is that next bit of code so yeah 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 okay so I'm gonna copy the stuff that is here the stuff that's between basically the service tags you see our keyboard is basically a service in Android language talk whatever you want to call it um, so basically you're telling your uh, you're saying in the app when people download it it's a keyboard and it will pop up when uh, you know when you want to type something so because you know it's a default keyboard so copy that copy paste that you know straight after the activity bit but inside the application tag as well because everything should be inside the application tag. Right, so save that, control S. What's next? All right, so now one more file. This should be pretty easy to do, really, all this stuff. Um, almost done. New directory and call it XML. It's just a kind of file. Um, and inside XML, right click again, new XML saw resource file. Right, so and call it method. Shall I be weird and copy paste that? Let's copy paste that so you, you can think about how you would do it if you're going through my tutorial. So, again, you don't need to copy the XML bit, it will automatically. Uh, do that because it knows it's a XML resource file. Uh, let's delete and uh, paste and uh, OK. It's going to try to generate some rubbish to make it see how it looks, but we don't care about that. Uh, oh, yeah, so we need to replace the code for it. So if it tries to show you how it's going to look, uh, you don't really want that because you're going to replace it anyway. And how do you replace it? How do you get out of this view? You click text. Okay, now, right, what's next? I need to copy paste uh, the little bit of code that you have in method.xml. Copy. Uh, there we go. Replace, paste paste the whole thing there's no first line of code that you have to worry worried about in this case that's going to be different just copy paste replace the whole lot with the code from my tutorial and uh, we should be ready okay so um i'm gonna quickly plug in my 
my phone, which I forgot about doing. Okay, with a normal kind of USB charger kind of connection, just looking for a USB socket. So I'm just uh, connecting my phone. All right, the next thing you have to do, actually, I forgot about, is uh, go on your phone, go to settings. Uh, uh, what was it? Settings and then uh, I'll quickly look at it. Settings and developer options. So scroll down to developer options, and somewhere in there will be USB debugging. You'll see all of this in my tutorial anyway, right? When you click on the link under the description of the video, and uh, check, you know, t make it so it says it's got a tick on USB debugging. This is for programmers basically, so you can stick your programs that you make um, onto your phone to test them out, see how they look. So once you've done that, you can press back on different versions of Android, it might be slightly different, so you might have to Google it and all that kind of stuff, whatever. Okay, so once you've got that, it's pretty straightforward. You just press this play button and uh, it will, well, it will do this a bit slow. Uh, this thing so it recognizes my phone my ancient phone and uh, click OK and it'll start doing stuff to it it's kind of building your project and it'll just pop up on the phone so I'm not very skillful or bothered about the editing so I'm not going to show you how it'll look but it's pretty basic it will look basically like that actually there you go it'll look like that I called mine Bob you and we call something else um, that's it I think is there anything else? Oh yeah. So um, then, once you've uh, once it's popped up on your uh, phone, you also have to set it as a default keyboard. So how do you set it as a default keyboard? You have to go to settings again, and you have to choose uh, language and input. And uh, the keyboard I I've called the keyboard boss board. Yeah, uh, where is the, the name boss board uh, kept? So it's uh, somewhere here. Uh, boss board, you can see there. So, yeah. I don't know what that was. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so that's the label. You can change it. You can change lots of stuff yourself. Just, uh, there's not much to look around. There's only a few, uh, you know, files in this whole project. So you can check it out and fiddle with it and I've made it so it's really simple it's for my little brother who hasn't got much um, coding experience so I made it so he could easily change it and hopefully you'll be able to easily change it even if you don't have much coding experience um, I don't think there's much more to say actually let me give you a little um, guide round the code so you can get through it so uh, this you don't have to worry about let's get uh, actually that doesn't mean do anything uh, that that's just like when you're really quite an expert you start fiddling with that um, not really much you need to do with that anyway don't need to do much with that it just says it's UK English but it's that's really not important okay um, oh yeah when you want to stop playing your code press that stop button here it'll stop running your code um, what else? There's all sorts of things like changing the icon, whatever, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm trying to keep this tutorial short. Uh, main activity, again, that's not important. That's kind of the default code that came when you uh, created the project. Now, the, the stuff that does matter, this stuff hardly does anything as well, but let me quickly tell you, basically, it creates one of these my views, okay? I just call it a stupid name. You can call it something even better if you want, the my view. A view is how you look at the app, okay? So it creates a my view and sticks it in the main part of the project and sets the, the height of the keyboard, uh, just 129 pixels tall, it's very small. Um, yeah, oh, and this bit's important. So right now, I've made it really, really simple. So your keyboard will only type the letter A, and that one means something. You have to Google it again. What does commit text do? Basically, it types the text, and there's things for deleting text and stuff like that. And um, 
since uh, you might be a bit of a, a bit new like my brother is to coding just know that this uh, thing this is IDE development environment place where you can program uh, does a lot of stuff for you commit text and complete text and all your different options that you need will be there so you don't have to google too much but whatever uh, yeah so the main thing is here so when your keyboard does pop up it will be really basic it's just a white little rectangle a very tiny rectangle 129 uh, pixels tall right and the width is the width of the screen whatever and uh, the the drawing you get a little drawing basically i drew a random thing, I drew an oval uh, with these dimensions, very tiny oval, and I set the color black, so you're going to get a black circle, it's just sitting on your uh, on your keyboard doing nothing, but the point is, so I put it there so you can uh, see what you can do, because basically your whole keyboard would be a bunch of drawings, different things happening, reacting to your touch, so this is the touch bit, and it catches the X and Y, I was thinking of putting the X and Y here, X there, Y there, so that um, wherever you uh, tap the that black rectangle, I mean sorry, not rectangle, oval, will pop up there, and so you can see it's reacting to your touch. And then I did this weird thing, because uh, if you don't, basically, and every touch, there's two touch events in when you touch when you touch it and when you release it and so if I didn't put this piece of code here it would actually write two A's it will like um, touch event when you press down it will press and make a uh, type an A when you let go it will type another A which is a bit silly I just want one A every time you tap so I said if the uh, when I, only when I release when I go up or uh, you know when I release the or stop touching the the screen will it type do this thing called type something and type something is back here type something it does this it gets a connection to whatever other thing you're using and sticks an A in it right that'll do let's stop recording